by MVC talking about the vocabulary list in yeah. Unit 11. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go through every word, we're just going to go through some highlights. Um, and the first one is the verb akuo, which um, it has a funny principal parts, okay? It has a deponent future, akusamai. I don't know if we talked about these, did we? Well, yes, I think we did. Briefly, and yeah, just briefly. That's they were. Yeah, that, that they deponent. exist, okay? The rest of the verb is uh, um, you know, normal, and but it's only deponent in the future. And the meanings of it are interesting, okay? Um, it's it, The book tells you, plus the accusative of the thing heard and the genitive of the person heard. So so this is, I heard a noise from, or I heard a speech from Bill, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, um, so the, the, the thing that you hear and the person who's saying it, the thing goes in the accusative and the person doing it making the noise goes in the genitive case. That's a kind of interesting notion. You can also say, I heard of you in Greek, mm -hmm. okay, just like you can in English, which is a kind of part of genitive. It means, I heard something of you, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. a piece <laughs> as opposed to the whole, okay? If you say, I heard you, then that would be in the accusative case. But if I heard of you, um, a little bit of you, then put them in the genitive. So you have those kinds of distinctions. And then there's this funny use of it in the passive. The, this verb doesn't really have a middle except in the future. And when it's passive, when it has middle endings, it's almost always passive. Okay? Notice that it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a perfect passive form. Okay? Um, but you, you have passive, aorist passive, and, uh, and the other, the present, and the imperfect can be passive forms. Okay? Yep. And you also have a future passive. So that is that means to be heard of, okay, to be spoken of rather, okay. So you can say uh, uh, he was spoken of, and um, just as you can in English, or, and, and uh, it's an interesting and common use of this verb in the passive voice, okay. Um, this lesson finally gives us some other verbs. Okay, that are, have second aorists, and it has three of them. The verb balo, um, which is an interesting verb in itself, with two lambdas in the present system, but only one everywhere else. We've seen this forever with the verb angelo. You're off the screen, Belisi, again. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> angelo, that, that uh, has two lambdas in the present and the imperfect, but one everywhere else. So there's the principal parts, balo and balo. It's got a contract future, as Belisi has done. That's an epsilon contract. Ebalon, ebleka, eblemai, and eblethein are the, are the other principal parts. Um, the cool thing about this verb, among other things, is that it means two things. Balo means to hit and to throw. Okay? Um, the 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 general opinion is that the fundamental meaning is throw and that hit is a secondary one, but they're both there. And the best explanation that I know of this is that it's a matter of some of a grammatical category called proxemics, which <laughs> proxemics has to do with the Latin word of what's near and what's far. So in some languages, you actually distinguish between whether you're close to or distant from an action. And, and so if, if in the process of, of throwing something, you're far away, mm -hmm. it's, it's throwing. Right. If you're up nearby, it's hitting somebody with something, at least in theory. Interesting explanation. <laughs> okay. Um, but notice it's a second aorist, ebalon, uh, that we get, right? Which is like ebalon. Right. There's, there's a new one. All right. The second, second aorist verb. Um, has a form that's weird and interesting as well. This is the verb lombano. These are, you'll notice that these are very common basic notions. You're off the screen again, please. <laughs> <laughs> lombano, which means to take, okay? Um, uh, and uh, lombano, lepsomai, elabon. Okay, second is elabon. You can, remember, you can tell these are second because there's no SA, right? And it has the endings of the imperfect, just to remind you. Alavon, um, elefa is the perfect form. Ei has a weird uh, diphthong with an eta, not an epsilon iota. 
Oh. Okay, uh, they far because the well, no the original no there's a, yeah the way around all right yep. okay uh. <laughs> okay so it's epsilon iota epsilon iota lambda eta and then fa and then fa mm. and so you've aspirated mm -hmm. it and you have a weird e ei instead of a weird duplication of the ei on it. and okay. then uh, a lay my with two views is the is the perfect middle of passive and a lathe thing with again the lathe root with an eta nope no nope, not an ei but an eta in the in the stem uh, oh again yep. <laughs> i want it to be <laughs> so you can see the lathe see the, yep. there's a consistency the lathe root okay. gives you lape some i and a lathe a a lathe mm -hmm. i and a lathe thing okay. lambda a to phi the one that's weird is lambano okay the present form is formed on the basis of the aorist so there are a bunch of verbs like this in, have, which have an, an, what's called a nasal infix. The mu there, the original root is lab and lab, lab. And so you get um, the mu in the, in the present and an ano suffix. But everywhere else the root is lab or lab. Okay, so you see the lab in labsamai and lab in the aorist. Okay, labsamai and labsamai and labsamai and labsamai. So it means take. All right, the third verb with the second aorist, right? Oh, okay. just remember this. Is yes. The... Okay, we want to remember this about it. This is the one of the verbs that has the accent. You, you can say. Just that in the imperative, uh -huh. the second aorist imperative, it has the accent here. On the second, um, on the last syllable, which is a rarity in Greek. Okay. <laughs> yep. All right, and the third one is the verb to suffer. Okay. Pascho. You got the English word paschal like and paschal lamb, okay, um, from this. Um, and so it means suffer. The future, get a load of this, is pesami, E I, and so on. Pesami, I'll explain these in a second. And then the heiress, the second heiress is epapon, and then pepe, mm -hmm. pepantha, right? Exactly. Good. Pepe's my memory. Yeah, there know. you go. Pepe Smy. You got an accent there. Pepe Smy. And I think that's it. There's no one else. Passive. Yeah. No, but there isn't any Pepe Smy. Forget about it. That's wrong. Just kidding. Yeah, forgetting. Forget that. There is no. So, you just so no five or six? No five or six. So the reason that there's no five or six is important, okay? Notice this is a verb with a middle future. Pe Smy, okay? Um, the, as well as the second yes. aorist, okay? If we look at the fourth principal part, pepontha, okay, we've got a reduplication, and the implication is that the root of this verb in the, in the, in the perfect is ponth, okay, which should vary with penth, P-E-N-T-H. Can you write that over there? Yeah. Penth. And it turns out there's a, there's a root noun, penthos, okay, you may have heard of this character, mm -hmm. pentheus, in the Bacchae of Euripides. Anyway, it means suffering or sorrow, it's the older word. For we learn pathos, okay, um, but penthos is the root noun from this verbal root penth. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives you, actually, tosco comes from penth, no, no vowel, sco, okay, p-n-t-h, and the suffix sk or sco, okay, that, that you get, originally it's a kappa, but mm -hmm. because of the theta, it becomes a right. chi, okay. Um, penth sco gives you pasco. Penth semi gives you pesemi, okay? So it comes from the root pent. Epathon is again from E P N T H the, the, the root of the aorist is P N T H and the N there turns into an alpha, right? Just like the N of unlikely comes up as Greek alpha, a moral and all those things. Remember we talked about this before? Um, and so so this is all the same root, although it looks very different, but it means it, it, here's what it means. It means to have something done to you, okay? In other words, it, 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 the basic notion of it is is passiveness, okay? So you can't have a separate passive thing of a verb that means, as we meaning is fundamentally <laughs> passive, right? So that's why there's no perfect middle passive and there's no aorist passive. Um, and, but it, it, it can take a, an agent. So you can say, I was, I suffered at the hands of somebody. Mm -hmm. Right? 
Yeah. And then you're going to use her pawn, the genitive, for the for the person at whose hands you suffered. Okay. Even though the form is active. Even, even though the form is active. Yeah. Exactly. Beautifully said. Okay. Um, let's see what other things are in this lesson. There are a couple of nouns here that are important. There's the noun gune, gunaikos, the word for woman that we talked about, which means woman or wife, um, just like aner means man, male person, in other words, or, um, or husband. Um, there's the noun eros with an omega, or eros erotos. I don't think we've seen any nouns with that suffix, but it's just a genitive erotos, um, and the forms of what you would expect from the, that ending, the native plural is erosi, from erotsi. Um, but in the book translates it love, which is a common uh, uh, translation, but it's a mistake. You know, you are out of the picture, but see. Hi. <laughs> yep. So it means desire, okay? It means, rather than something romantic like love, okay? Um, and I think it's very important to understand that in, in, in Greek and in general, okay? But it's not not the English word love. Um, another important noun in this lesson is the one we mentioned in class today briefly, kalos, with two lambdas. The s stem noun that's derived from the adjective kalos, kale, kalon, which means beauty, kalos. Kalus, okay, is the genitive, and it's neuter, da, okay? And it means beauty, yep. Accent on the first syllable, yep. So it means beauty. Um, we also get the noun kerux, kerukos, actually. And the, the cognates of this word have to do with, can, can also mean a poet in some in the European traditions. Because a herald, okay, this, is, this word means herald, okay, at least that's the standard translation. Um, what, it, what it means actually is a, a person who's physically sacred, okay? You cannot harm him, even if he's the, the herald of your enemy, okay? There's a story about, uh, about I think it's the Spartans and Athenians thing. I think these, these Athenian, the Spartans sent the Athenians a herald and they threw him into a well and he drowned. And, and, uh, and the curse of the Athenians was that all the males, their penises fell off. Oh, yeah. that's terrible. <laughs> Uh, Don't so kill the messenger. Yeah, you, can't, you can't hurt heralds. You know, disasters happen because of it. So, so anyhow, it, so it's a sacred person, and 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 sometimes kerukes are ambassadors. Okay, we have the same notion that that preserved in our notion of what an ambassador is. Um, the word for the thing that that um, that Hermes carries, which in Latin is caduceus, in Greek is kerukeon. So Hermes is a kerus. Okay. He's a, he's a person who go, goes between opposing camps, right? Mm -hmm. And who's sacred. All right, now we get names for numbers, which are indeclinable. The word for seven, hepta. The word for eight, octo. Um, we don't get the word for nine, but we'll get that later on. Um, we also get um, the, this, some more interrogative, uh, the interrogative uh, adverb, Bos, which has is interrogative. Remember, we had pata in lesson in unit ten. This is the equivalent. There's pata means when, and just as um, uh, with with an accent, it's an interrogative that introduces a question. So pos means how when it's at the beginning of a sentence and has an accent. When it doesn't, when it's enclitic, okay, when it has no accent, it means somehow. And just likewise, potet means when question mark. You can put a question mark after the how, okay? Um, because the, the, when it means when question mark, it has an accent. When it means at some point or some when, there is no some when in English, it means at some time, okay? Then it has no accent, right? It's an indefinite. So those are, those are useful words that come up a lot in Greek. And then we get the adverb tata, that means then, again, in the same family of these time words and interrogative words. Um, and let's see, here's a famous Greek word that we get along with eros. We have hubris, okay, mm -hmm. which is a noun like polis, hubris, hubreos, or polis, polaos. Um, it translates it ins insolence, okay. A lot of people, you know, 
it's, it's um, feminine, it's feminine. feminine. Mm -hmm. all the is nouns are feminine, right. yeah, sorry. So you know, it, the book translates that in, insolence, but what it really means is behavior that's um, naturally uh, met, that, that's out of kilter from the point of view of the way it usually is, okay? Mm -hmm. That's and something has gone haywire in somebody's behavior. It's hubris. It doesn't mean arrogance or insolence. So so plants can have hubris, and in which case they they stop doing what they should be doing. They should be producing flowers and fruit, but they produce only flowers and the flowers drop off. Um, so that, things like that. So it's a it's a much more complex and interesting concept than arrogance or you know, behavior. That's weird. So in Athenian law, here's another thing, that in Athenian law, hubris means assault and battery. So when you beat up your 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 fellow citizen, okay, in Athens, that's hubris. It's you you you've gone nuts, okay, and you do harm to your own citizens from the Athenian point of view. So so you can see how this notion can get into something like arrogance, but that's not the underlying idea. All right. Um. Okay, that's about it and in terms of things that are particularly interesting or peculiar about the words in this lesson. Okay? I'll follow the